Okay, hi, this is uh, Ben West Beach, aka Breach, here with DJ Pierre from Chicago, um, who was one of the, I would say, like the godfathers of Acid House, or he even invented it sometime. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's great to be here, you know. It's, it's an amazing thing just being in your studio. Thanks for welcoming me in. Yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure. It's not always nice having, like, meeting another artist that, you know, I've, I've listened to you for years, and so it's nice meeting you and, yeah, just having you, like, in my <laughs> recording space. That's really, really cool. I uh, love the fact that we're doing an interview here. Yeah, so. it's, yeah, it's nice. It's personal, and then we're going to have a little jam as well using the TR8 and T T TB3, which would be wicked. Um, so I wanted to like, ask you about um, how, I mean, you'll see Future, which Acid Tracks EP, that's mm -hmm. sort of said to be the first Acid House tracks. Were they the first, or was it like, had it been going on a bit before and this was the first thing that got released? Absolutely resounding, yes. It was the first. People used the 303 before we did, obviously. But no one sought to tweak the knobs before oh, wow. we did. They just used it as an, an accompaniment with their, them being a musician or they just had used it on a track for a bass line to emulate a bass guitar. But um, when we had purchased it, we that was our intention as well. But when we had got it, um, I had started twisting the knobs and and we thought it sounded good, me and the other guys from the group, and it was like, wow, this sounds good. And then I started twisting it in such a way to the beat and everything, and it was like, yo, we need to record doing that. Yeah. And then that's what made Acid Acid, because had we not done that, it would have just been, we would have just been another person using a 303, using it for a bass line, because we were trying to find a unique bass sound we were buying different keyboards and we said, ah, I just don't have that sound yet. So, us really trying to sort out something unique, this really was the driving source with looking at other keyboards. And then when we got it, man, I just, we were just playing with a beat and then I started twisting the knobs. I was like, ah, oh, it sounds good, doing it like this, like that. And next thing you know, we, we programmed some drum tracks and, and we made the first, very first Acid House record. And um, this I'm talking about the group Future, and then once it was uh, in the clubs, you knew it was something special and something different. Yeah. So. And so it was like it was like that sound. You were the first guys to sort of pin that sound, and then everyone obviously knew you were using the 303. Well, I don't think they did. Well, people didn't know they what it was. They kept asking me. It's like, what are oh, you no using? Way. And then we were like saying, okay. Do not tell them. Do not tell them what we're using. Yeah, I kept right. saying, uh, I think it was the Juno 106 or the JP800. I started saying all kind of stuff. And then uh, next thing you know, I heard Armando 151. And and because we heard other tracks and we say, nah, that's not the 303. Nope. They're not doing that. Right. That's not the 303. And then next thing you know, we seen, we heard Armando 151. And we were just like, Right, he's Somebody got else it. has it. He's got it. It's like no, yeah, no, right. cause that's our thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of really how it happened. But and then it's funny how people look back now and they think, oh, anybody who used the three hundred three were making acid. But now you can you can kind of quantify that. But once we set the parameters of what acid is, yeah, this is acid. When you turn twist the knobs on the three hundred three, then that that mean that meant that we set the parameters for what acid is and once you do that you've created the the whole thing yeah because you you said this if you do this this is is with this machine it creates a sound that we call acid yeah so you can't go backwards to people that used the 303 before us to say oh they were making acid like no, 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 no. They just used the 303 how it was meant to be used. Yeah. So it's but now yeah. anybody with the 303, even if they just let the baseline run straight, it's, the, it's acid. You got now. it. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. once we've kind of dubbed that machine as the acid machine, now anything you do on it is quantified as acid. So right. when you were when you were like manipulating it the first. When you it, you just said you were twisting the knobs and that was the sound, you know, mm -hmm. just there was the, just the knob twisting. Um, was it like um, 
Was it a thought about thing, or were you just literally just playing with it, and then you were like, shit, this sounds dope? Well, what happened was, is um, when it was just running normal, and we, we were programming it, but during the course of programming, I do have a habit of, um, like, twiddling with stuff. Yeah. You know, that's my normal process to get in my creative flow. Yeah. It's just, okay. I just mess around with things yeah, of course. and I did it with all keyboards and my thing was I had a specific affinity to, to twist the knobs <laughs> like at, in a certain way a certain rhythmatic way and so when I usually when I do that I'm just thinking okay thinking you know my, this idea might come to my mind or something yeah. so when I did it with the 303 I was like mm, I like that from the first time I turned the knobs on, and they went round. I was like, "Whoa, hold up, round!" Did it again. I was like, "Okay." And then I started like doing it to a certain rhythm, and then I was like, "Yo, I like that." Yeah. And so it just felt good. So that's basically how how it happened. Of course, I didn't sit there before we took it out of the box with the thought, "Okay." I'm going to twist the knobs on this machine. It's going to create a whole movement in the music business and history. You feel like, and then, yeah. bam, Master House is born. Yeah. So, no, it didn't happen that yeah. way. But it wasn't dumbfounded either. It wasn't like, yeah. oh, you weren't just whoa, like, oh, yeah. snap, okay. this is it. No, it wasn't like yeah. that either. It was like, okay, this sounds good. This is something right here. We knew it was something that was going to be good. But we didn't foresee that it will become the movement that it is today. So what can you tell me a bit about um, Music Box, uh, Ron Hardy's club in Chicago? And um, was that um, was that was that around before you you started making Acid House and you were going there yeah, or that was before? It was before. So how did what was going on in that club influence you as what you were doing? But did it influence you in the studio? You know, was it like a group of producers well, I all think together? The biggest influence Ron Hardy had was us wanting to have tracks played by him. Right. He was our favorite DJ. We were like, yeah. man, we want to have, make something that Ron Hardy would like. Nice. So that's because we want him to play it. So that was his biggest influence. And when we did the track, of course, Ron Hardy was the first person that we would take it to. You know, and so when we took it to him, he just listened to it stone faced. He did not his head. He didn't do anything. He just sat there just looking. And we were like, mm, mm, bit nervous. I think he likes it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then as soon as the track finished, and the track was 15, well, no, it was really 30 minutes long. Right. But the the acid track part of it was 15 minutes because after about 15 minutes, the first 15 minutes was this other acid. Right. And then the second 15 minutes, we switched to the acid track pattern. And then so Ron Hardy just said, after it stopped, he just he had his head down like this, and he looked up. He said, "When can I get a copy?" And then we're like, "Yes, <laughs> we're good, <laughs> nice." And so that's and then he deserves a lot of credit as well. Yeah, because he broke that track. Right. You know, I mean, he didn't have to play it four times in one night. Yeah, he could have played it once, and when the people were like, "What is this?" He yeah. could have just laid off of it. But that shows the confidence he had in what he believed to yeah. be something special and different. Nice. And he knew his people would follow him. Yeah. So by the fourth time, they were jumping up and down, screaming like crazy. Was it? Can you remember the the first time you heard it in that club? Yeah, definitely explicitly. I mean, first time we heard it, we were excited because our track was was playing, but we were also disappointed because the people like like stopped dancing. They're like. Okay, what is this? And it just uh -huh. kind of backed up, and we we're like, our hearts are going boom, boom, boom. And yeah. We're like, oh man, they didn't like it. Man, we thought they would definitely like it. And then, but we stayed, we stayed partying, we stayed at the club, and then we heard the, the beat coming, boom, boom, ding, ding, boom, ding, ding, and this is all rolling gear. You know what I'm saying? So we heard that bell come in. We was like, that was a 727. So we we're like. Hey, that's acid track coming. I hear the bell right yeah, there. Yeah. So we we're like, all right, it came in, and it came in. People were like, okay, this this track again. Yeah. And they just kind of, you know, all right, all right, you know, it's this track again. And then so he it, it went off, 
And then so we were like, all right, he played it twice. We were happy. We were like, okay, good. You know, yeah. he played it twice, you know. Then a little hour later, then next thing you know, it's, we're like, yo, it's coming again. We heard, then we started getting real crazy. We were what? like jumping up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, the third time we played it, the people were like, okay, all right. Ah, it's okay, you know, it's all right. It's okay, you know, we'll keep dancing. It's, it's whatever. And then it came on the fourth time we were just drop wow. dead like we just we were just going nuts and the people started going crazy it's like it's this track again <laughs> you know <laughs> and they started dancing and jumping up and down i remember people laying on their backs on the floor wow. kicking their legs up in there because you didn't know what to do to it yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean think of edm today imagine that were to pop out of nowhere because nothing sounded like acid track sound yeah. it had from from what people thought of music it had no music criteria to it which is also an amazing thing when you think about it why did we think that sounded good yeah. because technically it goes against everything I was taught you yeah, know but in what, music. melodically it's yeah. yes yeah I, under, I, I mean, understand that me being a musician playing in orchestra symphonic winds it's like my director would be like Get this noise out of here, you know. For you sure. Heard that. Yeah. But I I heard something melodic in it. And and I think that um because of that we we knew that it was definitely different and and thank God that Ron Hardy felt the same way and then the people all they needed to do was get used to it. And he knew that okay, I'm gonna keep playing this. They're mm -hmm. gonna get used to it. Yeah. And then once it's familiar enough, it's gonna be something. Yeah. And then you've then it, you, you're I, I love that it must have been so exciting, sort of being at the start of a movement. But I guess you sort of you don't even you probably wouldn't even realize it at the time because no. you it's don't really know. Track. Yeah, it's just one you track, know. and you're just thinking because this at isn't the time go that it far. wasn't even called acid. Yeah, it was just like this crazy track that Ryan is playing. No yeah. one could quantify it with with a title. Yeah, and and we didn't know what to call it. And then um, when word got back to us that Ron had this this new track called Ron Hardy's Acid Track, we were like, oh man, I gotta hear it. So we're like, yo, somebody let me hear this track. Yeah. This is track buzzing around the whole city, Ron Hardy's Acid Track. And when when someone played it to us on a cassette, because they snuck in there with Michael cassette recorders, you know, the track was playing. I was like, I was like, what? Said, that's not Ron Hardy's that's track. Tra yeah. They're like, no, that's Ron Hardy's track. They said, yeah, that's his new track. I said, that's not his track. That's our track. Yeah. And the guy that 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 played it for us, he hadn't. We didn't play it for him. So, but he knew we did music. So he were like, he didn't believe it. He said, no, that's not your track because we had never had a track placed or anyone playing our stuff. We they, didn't even, they didn't even believe me. They didn't believe me, but. I pulled out a cassette and like, like BAM! Put this in! <laughs> and then he put it in, he's like, What? Because you're not gonna have the track if, if you didn't make it. Yeah. You didn't people did not get Ron Hardy's track. Right. So it was crazy and he said, okay. I said to myself, you know what? They're calling that Ron Hardy's acid track? Alright, we're gonna cut off the Ron Hardy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> damn, track. damn right. Yeah. That's what that's what the title of this track is, Acid Track. Nice. That's pretty cool. So, um, what um, were you, were you using like what other gear were you using at the time apart from apart from the uh, 303? Man, we used the 303, the 707, 727, and what else did we have? We we have some other keyboards, but they weren't really making us feel anything. Mm. And one thing that people don't understand or realize that made also made a 303 unique is the fact that it's essentially a keyboard it's essentially a drum machine that's a keyboard kind of you program it like a drum machine i think in terms of when i'm programming the 303 as every time i program it i have a specific instrument in mind people think that you just let do random things with it i don't do random things with mm. it I program it like, for instance, some, on some tracks. I did a track called uh, Dream Girl. On Dream Girl, it was like a, a 
a viola to me or or it, it just or a upright bass in in my mind when I'm programming this is what I'm thinking yeah, yeah. when I'm programming this thing the, the pattern the way the pattern of the notes how they go yeah. it makes me feel this okay. and I think that's due to my musical background you know and then on other songs it, it may be something else but it's still a musical instrument I'm thinking in my mind yeah. when I'm programming it but I'm thinking of it as it's gonna sound really warped when I when I twist the knobs on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it still it still comes from a musical place. It's not just haphazardly done. You know, it's not just okay. Let me just see how these notes sound. You know. Yeah. And I think a lot of people take do take that approach with the Thrill Three, but my my notes are in key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to the other music around them, and it, and it, it accentuates certain sounds, and it's, it sounds just right yeah. in the track. Yeah, I think that's interesting. I mean, getting it sounding sort of musical, yeah, fitting the notes, and I guess a lot of people will just turn on the 303 hit play, you know, and just just go. I mean, I know? mean, and I'm not saying you can't do it that yeah. way as well. It could yeah. be done that way yeah. as well. But in the beginning, when I programming it, that's how that was the start of it. Is really coming from a musical direction. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, that that's really interesting, and, and I mean. It, you said before as well that people are just using them in studios to, you know, mimic a bass or have it right. playing along. Yes. It wasn't like the part of the track. Right, it wasn't. And, and the unique thing is like, you can have uh, a guitar in a, in a song or a string instrument in a song. And once you add that string instrument, it, it becomes part of the, the bigger picture of that track. But, once you add a 303 to a song, it's like it's not some acid. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the track just becomes an acid track. Yeah, it, it doesn't become a piece of the other track. Yeah, that other track is now converted into a, a, yeah. an acid track. Yeah, and that's another unique component of the acid sound is that it's it's so unique in itself that it takes over when it's added to something. It's it's the only sound. That that is its own music as well. You have a piano. Okay, it's just a piano. It's yeah. not a genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, if yeah. you add the three or three, it's like it's a genre. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, oh, it's acid. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. it's an official music genre. Yeah, it's and not I think either. people don't really grasp the totality of, of this this acid house movement yeah. and, and really what's going on and, and where it's gone and how it's grown to. You know. And, and where do, where do you see it now? I mean. Um, you, I mean, you know, is there any like artists that are really sort of making your ears stick up at the moment, sort of from that any sort of vibe that you had? You know, can you see that in anyone else at the moment? Well, I've seen it big time in LMFAO when they came out with their track, and you have a lot of top guys out there, pop wise, and I say pop wise, but really it's the so called EDM which to me is really just uh, another kind of sort of genre of, of house it's, music. It, genre, yeah, I, I think know? yeah, EDM's a very wide, it's, it's quite yeah. a vague, vague sort You're of right. term. It's not really, you know, it's just so wide it doesn't really mean right, anything exactly. really more, I don't think. But the more popular sounding, broad commercial sounding house, a lot of those guys are, are using it. And uh, I forget the one guy that just came out with a track you know, based on acid track, but he's one of those guys as well. Okay. So I, I thought it was a perfect time for Future to come back together. Yeah, right. Because That's if you don't, people will think that these these guys that are these pop stars actually created the sound right. because that's their first introduction introduction to it. Yeah. I guess because so many people like are coming around to it now as the first time they've heard it just because mm -hmm. it's generations and generations mm -hmm. later yeah. and um, yeah I think a lot of people don't really know where it's come from and it is so important you know to to you know get up on your history right. and like see where things have originally the story has to yeah, be told, and they, you know? you're, then you're getting it in its purest form like, right. like that is when the magic like happens you know what I mean it right. was like a special era and you can hit, really hear that in the records you know definitely I think definitely. That's, that's like so dope and I've I mean even just living here in Amsterdam I've learned 
so much more about it than I knew about it before, you know, when I moved here. And it really opened my ears up to like, I mean, the Chicago, the Chicago scene was so important. I mean, know. thinking about what, what, what happened in, in the UK. I mean, when Acid House got over there, it was ridiculous. Yeah, 89, that was yeah. like, Suit, you know. I was told that if I were to go to the UK during that period of time, and if they knew that I produced acid track, yeah. the Queen would not let me in the country. They'd be like, yeah, nope, for sure. Scotland Yard will be like, you're not going. Do you know there what? It, that could that could have happened for sure. Yeah, um, I could. Yeah, because it, it just they went said crazy. It was, was music? What did they call that music? They said something about the music i seen newspaper clipping oh that yeah straight up ban that music and oh everything. yeah like like the devil's music yeah the devil's music stuff. and stuff yeah, it's because i mean it was the first but it was the first um time you know sort of like ecstasy had come into mm. you know it was like the ecstasy boom that year and um there was like you know a huge wave at castle morton i think was the biggest one that was, the funny because thing they were is, all illegal race so how can they say that because you look at Woodstock and, and Glastonbury and all yeah. these things that were going on yeah. before Acid House. Yeah. What were they doing there? I think the same type of stuff. Yeah, of course, the, the same drugs type of stuff. were connected to a young culture. Yeah. And it didn't matter what the music was. Yeah, for sure. So it's it's not really the it, music that's the driving force behind it. Yeah, it's pretty harsh. You can't really say that. But I, I guess because that's what it's it's the association isn't it you know right, people right. like I, I mean it doesn't make any sense to me but yeah you can see why you know people wouldn't like it you know mm. oh yeah i can i can concur with with the whole stigma that's tied to yeah. a lot of forms of music because i remember psychedelic music when that came in yeah. whatever drug was out there it just depends what is the hot drug in yeah, the time exactly. it's like, okay this is that kind of drug music this is this kind of drug yeah. music but for me acid house is really connected to a gritty sound yeah you know when i first heard the term to me it felt like okay it's just it cuts it's cutting it's very futuristic sounding the edge is just so sharp that it, it makes you think of something that'll burn you yeah like acid yeah, yeah. And, and even the sound sounds like it just sounds just grimy so it fits for those reasons for me that's 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 my my thoughts about it and that's why I, I support the name as well because that's really what it's about for me. It's the texture of that sound. Yeah, that's what it's that's what it's about. Yeah, that makes total sense to me, for sure. Definitely.